Did you know how easy it is to host open API documentations on GitLab pages? We will even use GitLab CI CD to automate the process. How cool is that? So say goodbye to manual work and let's dive in to see how we can do this. First, let's see where you can find GitLab pages. It is available per repository. So for the repository where you want to configure it, open that repo and under deploy, you should be able to see pages. If you are not seeing it, you're probably on a self-managed instance where it is not installed. It should not be a version issue. It's a very old feature. I think it is available since GitLab uh, 8 or from 2016. Uh, so yeah, just let your administrator know that you have to configure, they, they have to configure this. Or if you are the admin themselves, just let me know. We are probably going to make a video on how you can configure a self-managed GitLab pages. In case you are seeing it, now let's open it. Uh, for an environment, for a repository where the pages is not configured, you will see a wizard. And you have to deploy your own static pages um, in this environment for, with this wizard. But we are not going to do that. There is a better way to do that, especially for the Epon API documentations or any kind of documentation where you can automate. Uh, for example, in this service, let me go on to the pages for this service. It's already configured. As you see, a URL is already generated for me. You can customize the URL and just open it and you will be able to see the documentation which is deployed. What? Did you think we are done? No, let's dig deeper. Well, let's check this finance service. Let's see how I have published the GitLab pages. As you see, this is a normal GitLab CI file. It has certain stages, test, documentation, and pages. There are some jobs associated with these stages. I have a test job running the tests, generate, which is generating the documentation. And at the end, I'm publishing the pages. Well, I guess the generate and the publish is the focus on this video. So let's get into them. In the generate part, this is where you will generate your open API documentation. I assume you already know how to do that. I'm using Node.js. So I have a script called generate open API under my package JSON, as you see here. So this is my um, script and it's going to run Swagger TS and the result of this run is going to be docjson under a Swagger directory. Um, what do I do with this? Where I upload it into artifacts. What are artifacts? They are simply storages associated to each job and you can configure it. You can upload files, folders and so on to it and uh, you can make them expired after certain amount of time and then you can say what should be included into this upload. In my case, I am telling whatever is inside my git ignore my NAS must not be uh, included into this upload. If you want uh, it otherwise, then you have to set this to true. In my case, false is fine. As you see here, I am uploading the Swagger directory, which was generated by my Swagger TS script here into the artifacts. Um, and now actually, if I come to the job itself, uh, you can actually under generate, uh, see, uh, this artifact. When I go under the artifact here, I see the Swagger JSON. This is the artifact which was uploaded. Now what will happen to it is that inside the next job, in my case, the publish job, I am dependent on the generate job. What does that mean? It means that if I go to the publish job here, um, in the beginning of this job, it says um, downloading artifacts for generate. Where does it download it to? It will download it to the running directory for this job, which is here. Each job is running on, in its own directory. And it is important to know that because um, if you want to upload a directory or a file out of this directory, the job will not allow you to do that. So before the upload, you have to make sure you have copied anything you need from those um, directories outside of this job directory into here and then upload it from here uh, to the artifacts. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have downloaded our Swagger JSON. And then what we have done is that um, we are moving uh, certain files. So as you see, the Swagger Duck JSON is now available inside this directory. This is the job directory inside this directory. The Swagger is now available. 
and I'm copying and renaming the doc.json uh, under the public directory, which is under the root directory and under docs and finance service JSON. Well, don't worry, this part is documented. I will actually share this with you, it's a surprise. I have created container images for you where you can have out of the box Redux and Swagger UI based on your preference available for your pages. Uh, we are going to check that out later, um, the documentation on how you can configure this. But for now, know that this part is documented and it is coming from this image. You must put uh, your files under the docs directory uh, from this image. Uh, so I am renaming my docs.json here and then it has a settings. So um, I have already created the settings. This is also not a specific to GitLab, but to this image. Uh, where you can actually define the name of your open API definition at the top. Uh, this is, for example, can be the name of your company, the logo of your company. Let's say you want to share this information with a customer, uh, then you can configure this based on your uh, company policies. And then you can include more than one documents even. For example, you can include even an, a remote document or uh, you can include multiple documents. Maybe you have a mono repository, you have 10 different documentations, you can include all of them. And in the exposed UI, there is a drop down, and then you can select from them. We are going to check that out later. Then, so what I meant with it is important to know that this is not allowed to uh, upload anything out of this is, as you see here, I'm creating a public folder here and then moving anything from this public directory, from the root directory to this uh, relative public directory, which is under the job directory. Um, yeah, because the, because here, if I say upload the public, nothing will happen. It, I, the job will actually fail and says there is nothing to upload. So basically, you need to create this and then move everything to here. Now, how GitLab knows that you, it has to use this for pages, it comes from here. You have to set the pages to true. This means that after the job is done, after this published job is done, it will upload the artifacts. The artifacts must be in the public. This public is mandatory from GitLab. It must be called public directory. And inside the artifacts of this published job, if I go now, I have a public directory where under docs, it has my settings and my finance service JSON. And anything else here is coming from that image, which I'm going to show you later from this image, right? And now what will happen is that because you have set that pages to true, if you go to the pipelines, uh, GitLab at the end of the job run will automatically detect this and then will add a job by itself called deploy. And it is going to deploy this into the pages. So then GitLab has you the pages enabled and ready to use. Well, hopefully now you're curious enough to ask me, hey Farhad, what was that package you were showing at the top of your published job? Well, that's a package I have created for you based on React uh, that is going to have two packages under it, two container images, one for Redux, one for Swagger. This is a documentation on how, to, how you can use it. The link to this repository is going to be available uh, in the description. You are welcome to contribute to this and add more features. As you see, the settings right now has limited um, configurations in it. The name is going to be the name which is appearing up here. The logo is clear. The dark will change the uh, theme of your header. Right now it's set to dark, so the header is in the dark mode. And the documentations, the, uh, the open API definitions. In case you do not want to have these settings, it's also okay. Uh, it's only important that here, instead of renaming this to whatever name you want, um, you have to rename this to default.json. So then you can get rid of the settings and uh, then you are good to go. Where this is the part that I should remind you since I make your life easier every time with these videos, or at least I try to, please don't forget to like or subscribe and Let's get back into it. Can we configure uh, the pages for a repository which doesn't have GitLab pages? In this case, I have a project. It is in Go. Uh, this is a private project I'm working on. It is a to-do application. This is a very like smart to-do application, but let's skip that for now. Um, in, the, in this Go application, again, I have a part where I am generating my open API definition. 
so as you see here I am uh, kind of merging it with the test stage and the result of this swag in it will be a docs directory so it will put my swagger definitions inside the docs directory and the file is called swagger json what does that mean this means that instead of that swagger directory which we had in the other example we will have the docs directory to be uploaded into the artifacts so this is the difference right now let's actually add our pages uh, stage. So in this case, I'm gonna call uh, this documentation. Uh, I have a documentation stage, but I'm going to use this as my uh, pages job. So I'm not going to have a published job like the other one because I want to show how flexible you are and how you can play with the names instead of like uh, thinking like you have to copy paste this so let's um, take this image from here so I'm going to take this one I'm going to take swagger UI this one was the other one was using the Redux. so let me take this one and put it here what else do we need we are dependent on the test job well, the other one was dependent on the generate job because that was where uh, the artifact was. Now we are dependent on the test because now the uh, test job has the artifact for us. The other one is certainly the script. Let's take the script from the other example that we had before because I'm going to change start so you can see and compare. Um, in this one, what needs to change here? So this swagger is not available here anymore right so i am downloading this docs from the test job so this means that this has to be docs what is under docs swagger json so swagger json is under docs so this has to be renamed as well and as i mentioned i want now to use a one definition without customization so this means i do not need the settings so i will get rid of this and in this case the name of my definition must be default the ui will detect default the rest is the same so i will just copy it into the root public i copy i create a public directory here and copy everything from the root public into this uh, local like relative public and then i will have an artifact where i'm going to upload this public and then i will just add a rule to be the same as the test so they can run um after each other and yeah so now if i save this and comment this if the pages edit so now the job is running so this test job is um producing this um uh, swanger json so let's wait uh, see what will happen so as you see my jobs are green but isn't something missing here there should be a deploy stage here right but it's not let's get into this and see uh, if everything is actually okay as you see here under browse i have the public and then under docs i have my default json but if i go under pages there is no page why well the why is in this i forgot to add pages through here right uh, well either i forgot or i wanted to teach a lesson who knows that's the question i forgot but anyways um now if i add the pages and let's just add this again call this fix go on and wait again okay it seems everything now is okay i have a deploy stage with a job called pages deploy and if i go under the pages which i already was and open this yay now i have the swagger json based on my um, documentation everything is fine now since i'm curious myself let's see what's going on under the pages here uh, what can we configure well the first thing is that I really don't like this uh, URL. Well, you really won't share this that much. You're probably gonna put it in your readme. But if you don't like it, you can get rid of it by unchecking use unique domain. So what will happen is that it will create this based on your namespace. If you are on a self-managed environment, the namespace is 
going to be your group name and then the name of your um, repository. In my case, I am on the SAS solution. My namespace is the namespace I'm working at. This is basically kind of based on my username and so on. And now I also can access uh, the pages again with a new URL. As you see, the URL is now a little bit cleaner and it's more customized for me. Uh, of course, you can come and add your own domains, but then you have to configure your A records to redirect to GitLab. Um, one, one other thing that I want to um, show you is that you can configure this because right now, if I access this, let's access this uh, from incognito. If I access it from here, I have to log in. So right now it is uh, authorized. Let's change that. If I come to settings, because maybe you want to give it to your customers or maybe you have created a public uh, API that uh, you want your uh, all of your customers to see, right? Now let's come here under visibility here. Let's search for pages. And here now you can actually change this. It's not here. It's this one. So here I will going to change this to everyone. And now if I copy this, come here to this, I can now access this. Here we go again. I hope I have planted the seed in your mind of what else you can do with the GitLab pages because this example was one of the many. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, add a thumbs down and let me know what happened so maybe I can improve and steal your heart. Aww. Yeah. Uh, if you're not a subscriber and you find this content useful, make sure you subscribe if you are interested in the similar content. With all that being said, until next time, cheers.